Hi lovelies, welcome back to this channel. If you're new here, my name is Belinda Strana. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Don't forget to please subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so that anytime I upload videos, you will be the first person to be notified. To my returning subscribers, to those people that share my videos, leave commentaries, and also educate each and every one of us, you guys are the real MVP. Alright lovelies, let's dive into today's video. So lovelies, I came across this video on my For You page on TikTok and I thought to share with you guys where the Republicans are still very shocked and not accepting the fact that Affordable Care Act might actually be stripped away. This got a lot of people reacting and I was able to put up some stitches because there have been some new developments concerning this act. I'm just going to roll the clip. Please leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video. And please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment. We are just here for educational and informative purposes. So why not just, you know, relax, leave me your own thoughts in the comment section, subscribe, share this video, and let's dive into it. I had stage four cancer. I'm so and sorry. I want to ask to make sure that you're going to promise to not ever vote against the Affordable Care Act because people's lives like mine depend on it. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Do you have a specific bill you're concerned about? Well, I'm concerned that they're talking again about cuts to the Affordable Care Act. Okay. Uh, and uh, if, if there's another repeal vote, how would you vote? Yeah. So I haven't heard anything about the repeal vote. Do you know a bill number? I believe that uh, President Trump was saying that he wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Okay. So is well, that something you would he's support? Not the president right now. Um, you know, we're looking at every bill as it comes forward. Not on that committee, but mm -hmm. one of the things we've doubled down on is making sure cancer survivors like my mother also mm -hmm. have access to it. So we're very committed to it. I think you'll see that in our voting mm -hmm. record. And also ask you, come join us in our office so we can talk mm -hmm. through the legislation together. And you promise okay. not to cut the Affordable Care Act and take away health insurance from people like me? Yeah. Do you hear what I just said? Yeah. Thank you. I remember when the Affordable Care Act was passed. I remember knowing it was a big deal at the time, but it wasn't until I got older that I realized we could not afford to lose it. Unfortunately, if Trump and Vance get elected, that will be our reality. Recently, Vance expressed his support for creating high-risk pools for individuals with pre-existing conditions, which would return us back to pre-ACA conditions. Before the Affordable Care Act, individuals and families with chronic conditions and or pre-existing conditions were often denied coverage because their health care costs were too high. In attempts to resolve this, these people were grouped together in something called a high-risk pool, which allowed them to be insured but at exorbitantly high rates. Eventually, many of these people lost their coverage because it was no longer profitable for insurance companies. The way that insurance works is by grouping a pool of people that have a variety of risk. Everyone pays in, some use it more than others, but the risk is spread among everyone. With health insurance, healthy individuals who use their insurance less subsidize the healthcare costs of older individuals and people with chronic conditions. The idea being that someday these healthy individuals will get older, maybe develop chronic conditions, and will then be subsidized by the healthier and younger individuals that have joined the pool. And this is why a high-risk pool does not work. While Trump was in office, he tried to dismantle the ACA multiple times and vows to finish the job if he gets put back in office. If this happens and high-risk pools become a reality again, Millions could lose protection, which means many of them will lose their coverage and or be priced out of the market. Health insurance only works for us all if we're all able to participate. We must continue to fight for the ACA. Our access to health care depends on it. So on that last topic, if Donald Trump gets the chance, he will end the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> and take us back to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. Do you remember what that was like? <laughs> Children with asthma, breast cancer survivors, grandparents with diabetes. Well, Governor Walt and I will not let that happen. Because we believe health care should be a right and not just a privilege for those who can afford it. You have seen more happen in the last two weeks than you have in the last four years. That's what Donald Trump said last night. And because he isn't president, it's hard to imagine what he could be talking about. What we do know is that U.S. employers added 227,000 new jobs and the unemployment rate is at a still low 4.2 percent under the Biden-Harris administration. 
It's also a time when many Americans are participating in open enrollment for benefits like health care coverage. And millions are facing the devastating consequences of the upcoming Trump administration after the Congressional Budget Office estimated that 2.2 million people could lose their health care coverage should Affordable Care Act subsidies expire. In a statement, President Biden said, quote, millions of Americans are benefiting from expanded premium tax credits that lower their premiums. If Congress takes that benefit away, premiums will spike and 3.8 million people will become uninsured. That's simply wrong. The American people don't deserve to see their health insurance premiums skyrocket. That's why I'll continue to call on Congress to continue the Affordable Care Act tax credits and protect affordable health insurance for millions of Americans, end quote. Tonight, there's breaking news from the Washington Post that Democrats are working to get a deal to protect people's health care coverage for another year before the new Congress is sworn in. We'll see what Republicans do. Y'all want to hidden fuck around and find out? I know we're all laughing about people not knowing the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare are the same thing, but get this. The United States is the single largest importer of all medical products in the world. And China is the largest exporter. Meaning, when everybody gets kicked off their health care and they have to start paying for everything out of pocket, they're going to have to pay the tariffs as well. <laughs> I made a lot of videos about the Affordable Care Act. And this person asks a great question about what life was like before the Affordable Care Act. Now, the Affordable Care Act was passed in 2010 and quite a few of the provisions didn't go into effect until 2014. And those ages, I was 17 to 21. Okay. So I was still on my parents' health insurance, but I can use both quantitative and qualitative research to kind of give you a primer about what life was like before the Affordable Care Act was passed. Now, one of the major things that the Affordable Care Act did was that it cut the number of uninsured people by around half. Before most of the major provisions of the Affordable Care Act were enacted in 2014, there were over 44 million people who lacked insurance coverage. And the few things you should know about these uninsured people is that number one, over time, the proportion of people who did not have health insurance went up. This is actually a study that was written in 2009 that was projecting the number of people who would be uninsured without the Affordable Care Act, okay? If the Affordable Care Act had not been put in place. The other thing you should know is that the insurance market was very volatile. When the United States went through these periods of recession, more people would lose their health insurance and the uninsurance rate would rise. And this is important, right? Because when you have an increase in the number of people who are uninsured, it leads to an increase in the amount of mortality that you see. This analysis from 2000 Mind shows that when people are uninsured, they have a 40% higher mortality rate than those who do have health insurance. That translates to around 45,000 excess on alivings. And that's why this increase in uninsured individuals is such a big deal. It translates to real lives. Now, when the Affordable Care Act was passed, you can see there was a decrease in the number of people who are uninsured. Again, when we look directly on the data, right, and we ask the question, did the Affordable Care Act decrease mortality, we find that it did. This study looks mainly at Medicaid expansion just because it's easier to be able to statistically analyze it, but it had a statistically significant impact in decreasing mortality. I also want to talk about the pre-existing conditions mandate of the Affordable Care Act, which required health insurance companies to give health insurance coverage to individuals who had pre-existing conditions. I think a lot of people think that pre-existing conditions uh, are more of these chronic type diseases, heart disease, cancer, diabetes. However, people were denied health care coverage because they had anxiety or depression because they had been pregnant before. A lot, the insurance companies basically had free reign to deny you coverage for any sort of diagnosis that you might have. It goes back to that argument of separating risk pools between healthier people and sicker people. J.D. Vance promoted this idea on the campaign trail and I will put the video below. Essentially, the point of health insurance in general is to spread the risk around. And so for insurance companies, it's more risky, risky to take on a patient that has a pre existing condition that has a healthcare condition. Uh, and that's from an economic standpoint. However, in the long run, insuring people, as I showed you before, decrease 
increases mortality. And so the question is, is what are we more interested in? Improving health outcomes or the business of running insurance to begin with. And that's something that the Affordable Care Act tackled and through various mechanisms, it tried to make it affordable for these insurance companies. We can get into a whole discussion about what a public option, which was an original provision of the Affordable Care Act that was taken out by a compromise with Joe Lieberman and that potential impact. The way the law shook out, it's private health insurance companies that are required to cover individuals with pre-existing conditions. And from my understanding from anecdotal evidence, that was a pretty not good time if you had any sort of potential uh, illness, whether that's mental illness, uh, physical illness, uh, having a pregnancy, something like that. You also had to pay for things like birth control, pap smears, mammograms, preventative screenings were not required to be covered until the Affordable Care Act. They were required to be covered without any patient cost sharing. So you as a patient were not required to pay additional money for these screenings. And we see that the preventative screening initiatives by the Affordable Care Act increase the number of colonoscopies and mammograms uh, taken by individuals, particularly increases among Black and Hispanic populations. So the Affordable Care Act had drastic impacts on the health and well-being of American citizens. And that is why when I say I have a lot of concern about the Republicans' plan to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which they have stated, I've cited multiple examples in the video where this comment is from, if you're going to come into my comments. It makes me worry that if there is repeal and unwinding of insurance takes place, how that's going to affect mortality uh, across the board. That's all I got. If you have any questions, let me know. The ACA, the Affordable Care Act, I worked on that law. I'm very proud of what we did, what we did in 2010 to get that law across the board, including with some Republican support. What I will see happening now are still a slate of bills. It can't be undo. It can't not be undone by a White House pen. I just want to make that clear. You can take away parts of the Affordable Care Act and weaken them. You cannot dismantle the ACA just by a regulatory White House signature. So you do need to work with Congress. And the key piece here that could not happen during the first Trump administration is repeal the ACA and replace with what? So could they become smarter in four years and find something to replace it with? It's absolutely possible, but it's going to be an uphill battle because some of the very entities that Trump is very positive around, American-based companies, Alex, those companies started because of the Affordable Care Act. So you're talking mm -hmm. about ripping away jobs. You're talking about ripping away access to the many voters that he claims are in his loyal voter base. So it's complicated. I think he can weaken parts of it. Can't take it all away. You know, many people refer to Obamacare as insurance, but it is important to understand that the Affordable Care Act, ACA, or Obamacare is not actually insurance policy. Rather, it's just a federal law that regulates the health insurance industry and makes health insurance more affordable and accessible for Americans. So under the ACA, health insurance companies are required to offer essential health benefits such as coverage for preventive care, prescription drugs, and maternity care. The law also prohibits insurance companies from denying coverage to individuals with pre-existing conditions. In addition, the ACA established health insurance marketplaces where individuals and small businesses can purchase health insurance plans at affordable rates. So while the ACA is not an insurance policy, itself, it has a significant impact on the insurance industry and has helped to make health insurance more accessible and affordable for millions of Americans. I was in the school drop-off and I was um, sitting next to this lady and she goes, I didn't know that Donald Trump wanted to take away the Affordable Care Act. I thought he was just going to get rid of Obamacare and I was all for that. And I paused because I, I wasn't sure if she was joking or not. And then I say, don't have the same thing. They're one and the same. And she goes, well, I didn't know that. And now I don't know if I'm going to have insurance for my kids or for myself. How are they so uneducated about the things that their presidential candidate wanted to do? Because somehow he baffled all these people into voting against their own interests. I never I don't want raisins. I want dried grapes. 
I don't want pickles. I want pickled cucumbers. I don't like the color of red and blue mixed. I like purple. I don't want butter for my crispy bread. I want churned heavy cream. I'm not looking out the window. I'm looking out see-through glass. <laughs> I'm seeing shit about how people said they voted for Trump because they wanted to get rid of Obamacare because the Affordable Care Act was better. <laughs> it's the same thing. Let me clarify something for my fellow minorities. White minorities, black minorities, Asian minorities, whatever, right? If we as black people have been saying forever, hey, help us, this is unfair, this is whatever, and you gaslight us, say that racism is not real, whatever, because you don't give a fuck until it affects you, why the fuck would black people give a fuck when it hurts you when they now come after you after they've already been coming after us? You was on mute mode. You was silent. You didn't give a shit. You weren't out protesting. You weren't talking about it on your pages. You weren't fighting for black people. You was always always giving the oppressor the benefit of the doubt, never giving that grace to black people. So why the fuck would you expect black people to do it to you when you're suffering? Fuck you now and into the future. What are you talking about? Maybe you should have opened your fucking mouth back then and we'd open our mouth now. Like seriously, love is it's so, so unfortunate that you had all of the opportunities. You have all of the privileges that you had in order to avoid stops like this in order to avoid all of this occurrence and all of this regret all of this finding out and all you know <laughs> you had all of it at the tip of your fingers but all because you let you know the what, what you have instead of you would like call it grudges or would like call it you know h-a-t-e or would like all it's okay you just want to be out there to get the better part out of you like this other my care that happens to be affordable care is just something that people some people will actually have to keep regretting like they will actually live to regret like seriously and now they are trying to abortion blames but you had all of the opportunity not to not to allow it to get to this point not to allow you know things to get to this point this the people that actually knew what all of the policies we are talking about the people who actually sat down and made themselves understand one way or the other how this might be avoided and they try to tell you table out their plans and try to let you understand that okay we're going this way wouldn't help i we prefer maybe we going this other way that might probably help but no a lot of people do not care because it is actually coming from people that look like me like <laughs> how can people like this tell us what to do how can they know more than us a lot of people even go as far as you know being bringing racist into, into it thinking that okay because of i am a pan colored person no matter what it's not nothing is going to you know affect me it might probably affect the minorities but the thing is that there is what they call pine colored minorities now white minorities like it's not longer um oh, black people this black people that or other poc no everyone is finding it out right now everyone has to pay one way or the other because illness is not meant for a particular race of people or uh, illness do not it's not meant for a particular group of people anybody can fall sick anybody can everybody actually need health care everyone need health care be you old person a child mother father sister no matter the color of the skin you have no matter who you are you actually need health care for your daily you know living every living thing need a health care one way or the other but this is what so many people do not put into consideration before casting out their bullets they are doing that based on oh let's just do this to still maintain our supremacy you are trying to maintain your supremacy whereby you are not even going to benefit because maybe you are a, you are in the middle class or something it's all of the policies that has been put in place is definitely going to benefit the topper class people or let's say maybe the super rich people 
like seriously these are the things people really need to like i was so surprised that i actually you know clicked on affordable care and obama and i saw that there have been so many advocacy on affordable and obama care and i keep asking myself why is it that people never saw this people didn't you know research people never thought that oh this might this might actually be an, a very very negative in, you know impact on myself and my personal health so you want to actually jeopardize your health or because you want to maintain some maintain what but seriously you want to try to like jeopardize your health that of your family and friends you know there's this particular clip i saw from a pan colored lady who is a cancer like she's i think she's in having this cancerous thing and she has been going for her chemotherapies and all of that which actually is so like a very huge amount of money and now she's making multiple videos pleading that they shouldn't be removed that shouldn't be removed like they don't they, they don't see that those people up out there they don't care about a layman they don't care about your suffering they don't want to listen i posted a video yesterday about one um country mom she was all out asking questions about why people are so why is it that people are not mourning because of the um you know health care ceo that was you know and um, people are like we don't blame you she's asking the question with a super powerful million dollar cost of ring and people are like we don't blame you because you don't know what it means to actually save up work hard to pay your, your health care and all of that but seriously and the little way at which people can actually get this is going to be stripped up because of what because no one was actually thinking of repercussion no one was actually thinking of their own personal interests people even even like they they were all carried away forgetting to think about their their own personal interests they were just thinking about the society they want the society to be maintained in a way whereby it will benefit some people and then benefit all other people this is what a lot of people were just carried away and forgetting that one way or the other even if you think that it's, going, it's not going to benefit these other people it's still not going to benefit you as well serious no you know there is different between you know rich pan color person and the poor pan color person and also vice versa these richer ones might not even they don't even care about the other ones so that is it's as if every other person now is, is on the same page and or, or in the same category but this is just something that could have been avoided just because uh, we've been like i don't know i even call it a brainwash no it's not they know exactly what they are doing but not knowing that anything that goes around must actually comes around like if you keep on pointing your one finger at a particular direction the four right fingers are pointing directly back at you and now see everyone is just you know coming out to air their frustration when the 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 milk has already been spilled you cannot you cannot cry over a spilled milk it's done so you just look for a way and the thing is that other ways that can help is being prevented <laughs> like that there is a lot of work to do anyway love this one just let me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video and please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment we're just here for educational and informative purposes so if you've not subscribed to this channel do your girl a huge favor to click on the subscription button like and i will see you love this when i upload what the next one is thank you so much for all the love and support why not just leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video and please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment we are just here for education and informative purposes all right love this so please share subscribe and i will see you love this when i upload the next one